Welcome to the second video from the Introduction to R workshop series run by the QIMR Bokoff and Statistics Unit. Um, this is normally a hands-on in-person workshop, but we are making videos to accompany um, the workshops and the booklet material. Uh, we briefly spoke last video about what work the Statistics Unit does for QIMR Bokoff and Metro North and MATA research, and we had some contacts for, um, as well. Um, hopefully, if you've come to the second video, you've already seen or had access to the first video, you've already downloaded r, &R Studio, you have the booklet, and hopefully you've also downloaded the packages or data sets. Um, if you haven't done the packages, that's okay. We're going to cover that a bit today um, in this video, and we won't necessarily be using any of those packages or the data sets in this video either, uh, but we will be doing it soon in other videos. So video two, continuing on with the more basic level stuff of how to use R. So it's not really the analysis stage yet, it's more the different parts of R and how to use it effectively at the very basic level. Um, this video is hopefully much quicker than the first one. We're just gonna look at a couple of little sections. So we're look, gonna look at um, getting help with R. We touched on it a bit in the first video, but we'll do a little bit more of that today. Working with packages and libraries and also the working directory. So how do we get help in R? Well, the first thing you can always do is Google. Google is your best friend in all things, um, and Google will generally be able to solve most of your questions for you. If, however, you just want to find documentation or help files in R, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, one way is the help function. So the help function is just help in all lowercase. Um, it's a function, so there's round brackets right afterwards, and then the input the help function or the argument is the function name in quotation marks. So the help function needs a, a character input to search for the function name. Um, so it needs to be in quotation marks. Alternatively, you can just use a question mark and then write the function name afterwards so that doesn't have to be in quotation marks then. Um, also, if you want to do a more general search, you can either use the function help.search or double quotation marks. So we'll quickly show how to do this in R Studio. So here I'm going to be searching for um, the documentation on the function seek, um, which is a function we introduced in the first video. So my cursor is going to be on the line 22 there. I'm going to hit control enter. And over here in the help window, I get the R documentation on the seek function or the sequence generation function. And that gives me a lot of information there about general description of the function, um, how it can be used, um, alternatives, so very similar functions to seek, there are like similar ones to it, we'll suggest it here. We'll go through the arguments, the details, lots of information there for you to use, as it comes out, and often also references or other functions might want to look up, and examples as well. Um, the exact same thing can be done with question marks or question mark seek, um, or the search um, bar up here on the help file. So I might search for a different function, search for main, and then it gives me all the documentation on the main function. Um, as I suggested just before, if you don't know the name of a function you're looking for, but you say you kind of know what it does, or you're just looking for um, general advice, or not general advice, as in um, generally for a topic and functions that are associated with that, you can use double question mark or help.search. So I might use double question mark down here in the console on ANOVA, which is a concept that we'll touch in later videos. And then in this help window, there'll be the search results for lots of different functions that contain that term. I can do the same thing with the function help search. Um, help search, like help, requires the character input. So now there's all the different um, documentations that include mean, but again, I can always just search for things up here. So I might search for something else. 
and we'll see what search results come up for it. Um, so whether you want to use just the search bar in the help window, if you want to use the question mark, if you want to use the help function, it's up to you. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do things and do what works for you best. I prefer to use the help the search bar in the help window, um, but other people who like to just focus on using um, the console and the script file might prefer to use um, the search functions. It's really up to you. Okay, now packages and libraries. So we may have talked a little bit last video about what a package is. Um, so when you download R, you get lots and lots of functions to use in R, lots of capabilities, lots of different functions, lots of code to use. Um, but R being a open source um, software, lots of people will write other code to use in R that won't be downloaded when you just download R. So to get these, you install other packages that contain these other functions that other people have written. All functions technically are contained within a package. It's just that um, when you download R initially, it contains a few packages already that contain functions. And then other packages you can download from the internet um, from a trusted source. Um, so R has its own um, network of packages that people have uploaded and been checked. Um, which you can download from and you can download them onto your computer and there's other things like github as well where people have put up packages there as well so you can install those packages onto your computer using the install.packages function um, so that'll take it just from the from the um, default repository on the internet um, where all the good R packages are stored so install.packages is the function and then the package name is in quotation marks. So it uses that character input. So you need to know what the package name is and have it in quotation marks. Single or double, doesn't matter. Um, and then once you have downloaded onto your computer, if you want to access that package and access the functions in that package, you use the function library. So you use the function library and then you state the name of the package you want to call into your session and attach to your session. Um, but you don't need quotation marks there. So you need quotation marks for install.packages. You don't need quotation marks for library. Um, just remember that difference. Once you, if you call in a package with library and that package has a function that shares a name with another function you already have in your session, um, the new function that comes from that package you just called in will be the one that R refers to first if you try and use that function name. Um, if you want to specify which package a function comes from, um, you can use the similar code to it down the bottom here where you say the package name and you use two colons and then you say the function name. Um, so we'll go see how that works in our studio with an example. So first example we have here is install.packages brackets then in quotation marks, plyr, um, dplyr is how you spell that function. This is one of the, sorry, not this function, this package. This is one of the packages that's listed as the ones needed for the workshop. Um, so normally I could put my cursor here, highlight the line and then run it. Um, I've already, I have already downloaded this package to my computer, so I don't need to do that. Um, Normally, if you run install packages again, it won't necessarily do anything because it recognizes that the package is already on the computer, um, that it can just take some time to double check that and try and download it and all that kind of stuff. So I won't worry about that right now. Um, so that package is already downloaded on my computer. And then to call it into my session, I use the library function. So here's my cursor on that line. And I use control enter. And it's given me some warnings in this red color here. So it's telling me it's attaching the package to plier. And then it's telling me that there are some objects that are masked. So the package stats and the package base are packages that are part of the normal R that you initially download. Um, and by calling into plier, the plier has some functions that have the same name as functions in stats and base. 
So this is telling me that these functions from stats, filter and lag, and these functions from base, intersect, set diff, set equal and union are being masked. And if I try and use those function names, it'll use the deplier version rather than the stats or base version. However, if, if I really wanted to specify which version of the function I wanted to use, I would do what I've done here in the script file. So there's deplier, colon, colon, filter. Or if I want to use the stats version, I would say stats, colon, colon, filter. And that would give me the two different versions of filter and specify exactly from which package it comes from. Also down here in the warning message, it's, it's telling me that deplier was built under R version 3.6.3. Um, the version of R that I'm currently using at the time of this recording is R version 3.6.2. Um, sure, I can update R, but it will, unless you're really on top of getting the new R version every single time it comes out, this will often be a thing that comes up. This is just letting you know that the package, which is also packages, which are also updated fairly regularly, um, is built under a different R version than what you currently have. So warnings like this aren't necessarily a bad, aren't gonna cause too many problems. Um, so it might be that you haven't updated your, um, in your packages in a while, so it's saying, the package you've just libraried in was built under an older R version because you've updated your R version since you installed that package, or this way where it's saying that the package that you've installed um, was built on a later version of R than the one you have installed. Again, often it's not an issue. Um, main things like this aren't likely to be affected by a couple of versions out, um, but it's just letting you know that if you see issues, this might be where it comes from or that it might be letting you know that there's a new version out. Um, so I left that in there just because it lets you know that can be a common thing that occurs um, and just be aware of it. So that's packages and using libraries. Now the next thing we're gonna look at in this video is the working directory. So the working directory if you imagine it on your computer, you have lots of drives, you have lots of folders and then folders within folders and a whole network and pathway of different locations to save things and store things and call things in from. The working directory is the location on that network and pathways where you're currently working. So it's basically a specific folder where you are by default gonna be trying to get data from, or where R is gonna, if you try and export something, where R is by default going to um, go to save things. That folder is your working directory, and the pathway, sorry, the pathway to that folder is the working directory, and anything you do um, will be basically be in reference to that specific folder or directory. So there's two important functions here. So there's get WD, or for, standing for get work directory, so that function is just get wd brackets, no input needed. And the output of that function is your working directory. So that's the pathway to the folder where R is currently focusing its attention for in this session. So by default, it's probably gonna be a fairly high level um, location. It's not gonna be generally deep within the subset of folders. Um, it might be your desktop, it might be just your documents folder. Um, but get WD will tell you where R is currently looking. And then set WD is where you set your work directory. So your work directory that you want to set has to be enclosed within quotation marks because it, it wants a character input, just like the output of get WD was a character in quotation marks there. So set WD, you'll generally start with a drive and then you'll say the folder pathway to get to the folder that you want to be working in. Um, so you can either do this with just a single forward slash separating each folder or a double backslash. So it might be the start of your drive and then the top folder and then the folder within that folder and then the folder within that one and so on and so on until you get to the folder you want to be working in. So I'll jump quickly over to R to show you this. So 
if I highlight get WD, this will tell me what my current working directory is right now. Um, so I haven't changed it. This is just the default one that um, comes up when I've opened my R Studio session. So it's just basically saying on the C drive, under users, under Lachlan documents, and that's the folder that R is currently viewing as the working directory. So that's gonna be where it's gonna look first by default for anything I try and call in, and it's gonna be the place where it sends anything I try and save. Um, then the examples of set WD are here. So set WD is the function name, all in lowercase, round bracket, then in quotation marks, the drive, the folder, the next folder, the next folder, until the folder that you want to set as your working directory. Um, I am working on a Windows system here. I don't believe there is a difference from Mac last time I checked, um, but I'm not really across the Mac or um, even Unix operating systems if there are differences that have popped up since I last checked. Um, so if this type of stuff doesn't work for you, um, Google should be able to answer your question or you can just email us and we might be able to help you. Um, one way to make it easier to work with set work directory is if you use your Windows Explorer or the File Explorer, I believe it's called in Windows system and um, whatever the Mac and Unix alternatives are, where you can search through your folders until you find the folder you're interested in and see all the stuff that's in that folder. And you can then get a copy or copy the name of that directory and paste that, that text into your R script or in your console. Um, you might have to change the slashes to be either a single forward slash or a double backslash. Um, that can be an easy way to get your working directory into your script or console without typos. Um, because if you have a typo in your working directory, I will spit up an error saying um, this directory doesn't exist on your computer because it has to be exactly what you called it on your computer. Okay. Again, I may have gone through these things fairly quickly. Um, I do encourage you to go along at your own pace and practice doing these um, and make sure they work for you. Um, and so if you need to go back in the video, pause it and get something um, to work something through or Google to make, figure out an issue, by all means do that. This is just a way to try and um, give you an alternative presentation of the information in addition to the booklet that you have. Um, so there are examples and activities in the book um, and we'll be using these skills in later videos as well if that'll help reinforce them. I really just encourage you to work through the book, work through the activities and examples and just practice yourself because the best way to learn R is by doing and by practicing. Um, thank you very much.